we're going to move on to searches today and we're going to look at linear searches and understand the difference between linear and binary searches now think about it this way you've got data structures like arrays you've got abstract data types like linked lists stacks and queues which can all store information but storing information is only half the story information becomes very useful when we can actually look it up and search for it quickly think about all the search engines out there they're basically just giant structures of data which are only useful if you can get information out from them let's look at a few key terms so pause the video and jot these key terms down you need to know what linear searches are a method of searching any list where you start at the beginning and check each item until you find what you're looking for or return a message saying not found binary searches also do something similar but they use a different type of technique bubble sort is a method of sorting data in alphabetical or numerical order so if you want to run a binary search you probably are going to be doing some kind of sorting first and then finally there is something called the big o notation which is used to assess the complexity and performance of an algorithm we're going to be looking at that in a bit more depth later on but since we're referencing it today i just wanted you to know about it now so i'm assuming you got the key terms written up let's begin by looking at linear searches the algorithm for linear search works in this particular way you set up a search criteria you examine the first item in the data set if there is a match you end the procedure and return the result with match found if no match is found you repeat the same process with the next item and you keep doing it until the last item is reached and no match is found then you return match not found now the problem with this is that it's too slow for oversized list it works pretty fast when the list sizes are small but as the list sizes grow bigger and bigger it slows down and then there are processing overheads on less powerful devices that even if you have smaller list but your processor isn't that powerful it's going to struggle with linear search the graph on the top right compares linear search with binary search and you can see that as the number of elements increase binary search starts to become a lot more effective compared to linear search we're going to be looking at binary search in a bit more detail later on okay let's start by coding a linear search in python on screen is just one example of a linear search there are multiple ways to implement this this one in particular uses an array and a function which then returns a value back to the main program and you can then output that value so pause the video and implement this in REPL or your IDE and then we'll continue. Of course, you might want to go online and have a look at different implementations of linear search as well because as a programmer, it's very useful to see how different people approach the same problem and the kind of solutions that they come across. It gives you a better insight into program design and you can be more flexible with your code. So do pause the video and go on and implement a linear search. Now we've just implemented linear search, which has a fixed item to find. It will always return the same value. So let's look at a linear search where you take an input and do exactly the same thing. On the right hand side, you see a bit of pseudocode. So first pause the video and maybe understand what's going on there. We're declaring the array, we're declaring the lower and upper bound. We're declaring the index, we're declaring the item which we need to search for, and we're declaring a flag which tells us whether we found the item or not. Then we define the lower and upper bounds, which depends on how many items we have in the array. And you can have them fixed like it's here, or you could use other techniques to make them flexible in the program. So during runtime, they automatically change. Then we're going to get the user to give us an input, set the boolean flag to false the index is set to the lower bound because we want to check the first item and then we use a loop to cycle through the array now we use a repeat loop because we want to have a condition where you keep on looping until you find the item or the index reaches the upper bound which is the final item in the array and basic selection is used inside to change the flag to true and keep updating the index to check every item 
and then finally we just use a selection that if the boolean flag found is true then output item found or not found in pseudocode you're normally given an identifier table which looks like the one that we have on screen on the bottom left hand corner and in the exam you might be given that along with some pseudocode so to understand the various different identifiers that are used in the pseudocode you need to check this table which will make more sense so my list is the array to be searched upper bound lower bound all of them are present so get familiar with this notation so just remember that when you're working with the linear search each element of an array is checked in order from the beginning which means the lower bound to the end point which is the upper bound until the item is found or we reach the upper bound itself and once again multiple ways of implementing this so do have a look around but what I want you to do next is pause the video understand the pseudocode and then try to implement this using Python that is your task okay hopefully you've got some code going on and your linear search is working on screen you see another version of a linear search this one uses a simple solution using a for loop you might want to compare this to yours and see how different it is and again you might want to try implementing something like this and check whether it's more efficient than the previous version now look at how the for loop is using the length of the array so we are not defined by upper bounds and lower bounds that we set at the beginning the lower bound obviously needs to be set to zero at the beginning but if the array has 1000 items or 10000 item you can still find this linear search useful the other one will always be restricted to 10 items so in the exam knowing the context of what you're trying to do helps you structure the appropriate linear search i would always go with a for loop based one but you might end up getting a bit of pseudocode which uses the previous version and then you answer the question accordingly now binary search is another way of searching and it's an official method of searching if the list is sorted the difference between linear and binary search is that the linear search will work on an unsorted list whereas a binary search always requires a sorted list you check the value of the middle item in a binary list with the one that you want to find and if it matches excellent brilliant you found it if not then you check whether it's in the left half or the right half so you use greater than or less than in particular now that works with both alphabetical items and also numerical item and in this particular case if you find that the left half doesn't have the item then you discard it and you keep doing it so the lower bound has to be moved from the bottom of the list item zero to the middle of the list and then you check the middle of the new list and you keep doing the process until you find the item so let's do an experiment let's try to find w using linear search let's compare it with a it's not w that's step one not w for with b and then you keep doing it until you get to w see how many steps it takes you well if you did it correctly it should take you about 23 steps now let's try finding w using binary search now remember a to z has 26 letters so we need to look at the midpoint which in this case is going to be m so if you compare m with w is that w no it's not is w greater than m or less than m so we know it's greater than m so we're going to discard all of the items on the left hand side including m since m is not w now the lower bound moves from a to n so you count how many characters you have left 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 10 11 12 13 so that basically means you need to go to the midpoint again so try doing that and see how many steps it takes to find w using binary search unpause the video when you found the answer okay you should have something like this it should take you three steps to find w now compare that to the 23 in linear search you can see how effective binary search is and this is only 26 characters but do remember 
even though it's lightning quick compared to the other one, you need to sort the list out. So there is going to be some processing time required to sort a list out in the first place. And if a list isn't sorted, then probably linear search is going to be the better bet. So binary search takes less comparisons using linear search, but how do we go about constructing it? Just like a linear search, you should see on your screen the identifier table and pseudocode for one possible implementation of binary search. It works in the same way. However, you will probably see that within the loop, you've got a greater element of selection and you will also need to use a formula or a calculation to work out the midpoint of the lower bound and upper bound. So we declare everything as normal. You got the array declaration of 10 items. You got the upper bound, you got the lower bound, you got the index, you got the item itself, and you got the Boolean flag when you found an item. And we set the upper bound and lower bound values to zero and nine, zero for lower bound, nine for upper bound. And then we get the user to enter something. The found flag is set to false. Everything is the same as a linear search. The loop is where the magic happens. So in the loop, you got the index value, which is assigned the average value of upper bound plus lower bound divided by two. We make sure it's integer. So if it's 13.5, we take 13, that kind of approach. Once you have that, you then start comparing the item to the one in the array and if it's found the flag is set to true however it's greater than that then you change the lower bound to the index plus one because we're not going to keep it at index because we already know we already checked it at the midpoint that it's not that one so it'll be the one next to the midpoint if it's in the lower list so it's smaller than that item then we change the upper bound and move it downwards so it's index minus one because the midpoint is again already checked so there's no point in checking that because remember the index is the midpoint now we keep doing it until we find it or the lower bound reaches the upper bound and once we found it we can output the message accordingly using a selection now do feel free to use python to code a binary search as well but hopefully in this lesson, you've understood the difference between linear and binary searches. That's all for today's session. And I would like you to make sure that you have working examples of both linear search and binary search in Python. So please do ensure that you do code it. And you do also understand the pseudocode version of this because in exams, you normally ask questions about searches and it's one of the most common topics to come. So do understand both of these effectively. I'll catch up with you in the next lesson.